Hello there and welcome back to a brand new day in the studio. Today is going to be a very different kind of thing. I noticed that a lot of folks like the paint along, so I'm going to try to uh, make the paint along a little bit uh, more elaborate with uh, multiple camera angles, but still you're going to have that split screen shot. And we're going to be filming about uh, no more than 30 minutes each segment, so it's going to be split up so that the paint along will be, uh, you'll be receiving the uploads throughout the week so in a daily kind of format just like my videos have been but they're going to be guiding you towards the development of this particular painting that we're going to start today so what we have here is a, a regular old 11 by 14 inch cotton canvas that has been pre-toned with burnt umber oil paint and that tone has been allowed to dry over several days and what we have here on the palette is going to be I'm just going to roll the uh, palette across the screen, so I'm just going to have them play the color palette in the order from left to right. So let's go ahead and get started with the painting here. So I'm going to use a little bit of my medium, the Neo McGilp. So I want to get a nice and even background color. So I'm going to use a little bit of ivory black, sap green, and our titanium white. And we're going to be using the Alla Prima technique to creating a painting. So that means we're going to be using quite a lot of paint. And after today's video, it's going to, it's probably still going to look fairly abstract. So again, this is going to be a, a paint along style. So let's go ahead and start to apply our background color. We want to cover very, very quickly now. And as I'm applying the background color, I'm also thinking of where I want to place the model's head. So just kind of a crisscross type of brush stroke, just going all the way down. Nice and simple. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to apply a little bit more paint. So we're going to use, again, sap green, ivory black, and let's just throw in a little bit of burnt umber. Why not? And the titanium white and our medium, Neo McGill. Put back to the titanium, sorry, the ivory black. A little bit of burnt umber, not that much. So let's say that the shoulder, it might fall around there. So again, we're just trying to get kind of an idea of the basic envelope of where we want to fit in the head. And you're gonna to wanna to have a lot of brushes out. So again, I recommend you watch all of the videos for the paint along. Uh, before uh, painting along with me just so you have the wet on wet paint and I think in the future I'm going to use a slow dryer because Neo McGilp the medium I have today is a fast dryer and I certainly don't want this to dry too quickly on me. So now the next order of business is going to be uh, to get the value for the hair so I'm going to use another brush now and I'm going to use a little bit of ivory black once again and a little bit of alizarin permanent. So just ivory black and alizarin permanent. More ivory black than alizarin permanent. And we're going to try to go for, we're going to shoot for gold. We're going to go for the value that we want right away. And uh, we're going to be using the darkest, almost the darkest dark. Now ivory black and alizarin permanent will give you a fairly dark color. So this is still a little too dark. This is a little bit darker than I would initially want to say um, to leave that alone. What I mean is I'm going to go over top of this since Ella Prima is wet on wet. I'm going to go over top of this really dark dark later on and put in the lights. It's a really long way to say that. <laughs> Painting this darker than need be so I can come back in and put in the lights for the hair. So just looking for the shape right now, and I'm trying to establish the top of the model's hair. So I think that the top of the hairline is going to fit, I don't know, roughly around right there. I don't want to place the hairline too high, however. I'd say somewhere about like that is where I want it to be. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do is get out a, uh, I'm going to get out a different brush. So getting out a different brush now, I'm going to 
mix up the cast shadow color. And the cast shadow looks a little bit, I wanna say warm, a kind of warm-ish cast shadow. So we're gonna start off with Alizarin Permanent, Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre, Ivory Black, Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre, and maybe a, a little bit of Cadmium Red. So this is Cadmium Red Medium. So let's see what this color is like on its own. And it's pretty, pretty much what I want it to be. It's a little bit dark, it's a little bit warm. It's not a generic brown. It's got a little bit of flavor of the uh, alizarin permanent in it. So our model is in three quarter view. So we're seeing a little bit. So right over here, we're seeing a little tiny glimpse of the uh, model's other eye, but uh, she's in three quarter view, much closer to profile than uh, centered. So again, don't worry about the exact specifics. We're working from general to specific. So ideally we want to cover a little bit more surface than need be. So just cover a little bit more surface we're gonna come back into this and make it much more specific. But for now, we need to start with something. And when you're working with Ala Prima, you wanna move extremely fast. So I'll tell you what, I think I'm just gonna put a little bit of a brush stroke here for where the nose may fit. I'm not entirely sure if that's where it's going to be, but I'm going to put in a little bit of a brush stroke there and all throughout over here for the side of the model's face and maybe the chin may or may not come all the way down to there. So again, I'm going to emphasize the fact that I'm trying to work from general to specific. I wanna have a little bit of fun with this too. So again, I'm trying to keep my brushes rather organized. So this is the background brush. So I'm gonna push this shape all the way in and over there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch into the, um, uh, let's see, a larger brush, say, suppose this one, and we're gonna mix up a flesh tone. So cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, titanium white, burnt umber, back to the yellow ochre, cadmium red medium, a little bit of our Neo McGill medium, and I'm probably going to switch that medium to a slow dryer in the future. So if you have a slow dryer, if you have stand oil, that would work pretty well. Just don't use straight up stand oil. I would probably put a little bit of, uh, of your odorless mineral spirits into it. So we want a flesh tone that's a little bit, a little bit warm. Not a generic kind of band-aid color, but let's throw in a little bit of flavor, a little bit of a lizard permanent. I don't know, a little more sap green just to kind of contrast that color. And I say, I'd say this is about good. That's about good. It might be a little bit too light for my taste right now. So yellow ochre, cadmium red medium, burnt umber. And that's why I switched the uh, filming style so you can see directly, hopefully you can see well the mixtures that I'm creating. That's a little bit closer, a little bit closer. But we're going to make these colors much more specific later on. So right now we're just gonna to try to get a feel for the shape of the forehead and automatically, automatically, see how I'm just dragging the brush over and over and over and over. And that's how I'm gonna get the edge quality uh, for the, uh, the hairline. I'm gonna do the same thing, just a little more paint. So I'm gonna do the same kind of thing right over there. Just trying to get the, uh, the value and the edge by letting the brushes, uh, by letting the brush uh, intermix those two shapes of color. So let's go ahead and fill in the rest of this now. So I chose Burnt Umber to tone the canvas just because I wanted something that was just a little bit warmer this time. So switching back to the dark brush for the hair, see how it's nice to have all of these brushes just laid out and ready for battle. Now switching back to the, uh, this is the brush for the shadow. 
I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit, and by shadow, I mean this shadow here on the side of the model's face. I'm going to put in just a simple little indication for the, uh, for the eye socket. So this is a little dark shape for the concavity of the eye socket. Now I want it to be a little bit warmer and we're working in Ala Prima, so we're gonna wanna shoot for color really quickly. So a little bit of cadmium red medium should do the trick. Just a little bit of cadmium red medium. Now switching back, there we go. That's the much warmer color that we wanted. Now let's go ahead and fill in the rest of this shape. But at the same time, we're trying to get uh, so we're doing multiple things at once. That's the, that's the joy and that is the agony of Ala Prima is that we're doing everything all at once. So I, I'd say Ala Prima is somewhat of the, uh, like I'd say it's a little bit of fast and furious way of creating a painting. Notice I'm uh, moving along much faster with this approach. So again, the nose, I wanna take a look at how far the nose goes. And I don't think that the nose is going to go terribly far out, but I think that it's going to go a little bit further out than I have in this initial little uh, design. So I'm gonna be seeing a little bit of light. So a single brush stroke there, a little bit of light uh, just below the model's nose. I am looking a little bit up at her in perspective. So back with the background color, I'm gonna go ahead and right away, automatically, just automatically, I'm gonna go ahead and get this shape. Super simple. Now the thing with Ala Prima is that you really want to, uh, you wanna utilize your time very, very efficiently. So a little bit of light right there where the, uh, eyelid will be and there's going to be an angle right across here so the other eyelid is going to be a little bit higher up relative so this one's going to be a little higher up uh, relative to this one and at this point i should make it clear crystal clear that i'm not trying to create a perfect photographic rendition of the model and especially after today's video you're going to notice that it's not going to be fairly realistic it's not going to be fairly believable uh, so and, and that is because we're gonna be splitting the videos up into segments. So you're gonna get roughly 30 minutes each and every day of the development of this painting. But you will see towards the end how these, um, how we can work from general to specific and get a fairly convincing image and the idea is never to copy, always to interpret. You want to you wanna leave room for creativity. You don't want to do the job of a camera. All right, so we're going to go back to that background color and see how, how easy it is to just move things around. Back to the background color. So again, we're just going to push that shape over. And so I'm going to pay very close attention to the wing of the nose. And I do have a timer set, so you're probably going to hear it when it, when the timer goes off. That's my indication that it has been um, enough time for the recording of this segment of the video, and then I will uh, move on to the next segment. So when you hear a timer go off, that's just my cue to uh, basically end the video. But don't worry, you're gonna be receiving daily updates. So again, it's okay that the ivory black is mixing in with the, uh, the flesh tone color. I know it's kind of neutralizing the color a lot, so eh, it's all right, let's go in a little bit of cadmium red, yellow ochre, back to the titanium white, and our Neo McGill, but probably shouldn't be using too much of that just because it's a fast dryer. And I wanna be able to finish this painting uh, wet on wet. So that's a little bit too pink, so back to the titanium white, yellow ochre. And we're gonna mix up a little bit of a generic value scale, and we're gonna make it much more specific as the painting develops. So I really hope that that split screen is, uh, is going to help you out. 
So now we're going to go ahead and throw in our next little mass of color. So we're going to switch brushes and we're going to use the ultramarine blue, ivory black, just ultramarine blue and ivory black and a little bit, just a little bit of our sap green. Now we're going to put in this little dark shape under here. Very, very dark. We're shooting for gold. We're going for the value and the color right away. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, push this shape up a little bit. Now, this very much is reminiscent of sculpture. This is kind of a sculptural way of constructing a painting. So again, this is the brush for the shadow of the model's face. I'm just gonna push this all the way up. Now then, there's even a shadow here for the ear. And again, working from general to specific is going to be our uh, the way we're going to approach this. So again, just trying to shoot for gold. I think that that's probably a little bit too dark. So ultramarine blue, titanium white. Now notice how I'm switching between brushes each time I uh, encounter a new area of color. Now the background is a little bit darker and it's obviously not that green just because there's a lot of stuff in the background. So I am taking some artistic liberty. Always leave room for creativity. So yes, I am taking a little bit of artistic liberty to make that background a different color. I don't really want the background to be a bunch of paintings within shelves. Now. I should have mentioned earlier. Uh, thank you, Catherine. So our model, Catherine. Um, yeah, I'm kind of new to this format of filming. Anyway, so I wanna thank our model, Catherine, for allowing me to take the photo reference. It's actually pretty difficult for me to find uh, models that will allow me to paint their portrait on YouTube. It's actually fairly difficult. And I like to paint people that I know or people that I've met. And I've met Catherine and I think I've, I worked with her once or twice before. So again, thanks Catherine. So a little bit of titanium white and ultramarine blue is what we're using to just put in this little shape here. And right now we're at the large color, large massing stage. And this is a very, very quick and efficient way to work in Alla Prima. Again, we want to have the canvas almost completely covered very, very quickly. Now again, I'm going to add the darker shape here just to kind of distinguish where the shoulder is going to be. And again, we're taking some artistic liberties here with certain areas. I'm definitely taking a little bit of artistic liberties right here. So a little bit of a brush stroke there. And I'm going to use my fan brush to help to eliminate a little bit of the glare. And the background brush, just to kind of push this shape up a little bit. Now I know there's a bunch of little details in there and I think we'll get into that later, but we're gonna keep it fairly simple for now. No need to complicate it. Just looking at shape. Now the dark brush, we're gonna go ahead and push this shape up a little bit. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to now start to reevaluate these large shapes. So I'm gonna push this shape over. And again, I know you're seeing it side by side and you're wondering how on earth is this uh, technique going to work? And, and trust me, it'll work. As long as you stay true to your shapes, keep things simple and easy, you will be able to create a painting. Now then, uh, I'm going to go ahead and reevaluate that background color. I'm gonna add a little bit of ivory black, a little bit of ivory black and some ultramarine blue. I'm gonna kind of squint at the photo reference. I'm gonna add a little more paint. And as we do this, we're also going to um, kind of add a little more nuance to the outside shape. So I do want the background still to get a little bit darker. So Ivory black should be enough. So a little bit of ivory black, there we go. Now it's getting much darker. And again, it's not getting that much darker. It's just getting dark enough for me to kind of change up the value a little bit, not that much. So 
now that I have this, I'm gonna take a look now at the outside shape once again. And with a single brush stroke, not sure if I'm gonna be able to get this edge quite right, but we're gonna try. So that shape is gonna go up and we're gonna use the fan brush. Fan brush just helps to eliminate glare. So switching to the flesh tone brush, I'm gonna be pushing this shape down even more. So I'm trying to look at the contour right now. So I think that I may have the nose uh, a bit long and that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and push the shape up. So I'm gonna use, this as the uh, cast shadow or just the shadow brush. Help to push that shape up. And I think so about there should be fine. And again, this is very kind of very much kind of like a sculpture. So now I'm going to go ahead and re uh, re-examine the flesh tone. So I'm going to add a little bit more titanium white. So the flesh tone is getting a little bit too orangey, a little bit too uh, yeah, a little bit too generically generic orange. Excuse me. So a little bit of yellow ochre, titanium white, ivory black, just to bring down the saturation. And it was only a touch of the ivory black. So let's go ahead and reassess this shape. Now I don't want it to be too cold because I don't want to paint a zombie. So I'm going to add a little bit of a lizard permanent. I think a lizard permanent is probably one of my favorite colors on my palette. So that's going to lead me to question of the day. What is the, your favorite color on your palette? Uh, my favorite color at the moment, I mean, sometimes it'll change, but my favorite color is a lizard and permanent. So a little more a lizard and permanent. And if you're new to this channel, if this is your first time uh, watching one of my videos, hi, I'm Yupari. It's nice to meet you. Uh, but anyway, and you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can always, always, always go ahead and scroll down to the description box below and all of the materials will be typed up for you. So again, I just wanted it to be a little bit less, uh, less orangey. So I'm basically going for uh, the color that I want for the overall large picture. And this is very sculptural. I'm treating this like a sculpture. But obviously there's gonna be some areas that are gonna get darker, such as around here. And, and that's gonna be because of the plane changes. But right now I'm not terribly focused on the planes. I'm focused on these large light masses. So again, automatically, automatically, we're going to soften this edge, see that? By letting the colors touch one another. Switching to the uh, shadow brush. I'm gonna go ahead and add the nuance, a little bit of nuance to this shape. And for today, it's definitely going to be about the simple shape. I mean, most of it's gonna be about simple shape. And you'll see how just the idea of shape alone, simple shape, will be able to uh, create a very convincing image. Pushing this inwards a little bit. Now I'm re-examining this little angle here for the chin. You want to use a lot of paint, a lot of paint. I tell you what, if you're afraid of using a lot of paint because you don't want to waste it, when you're done with your painting session, just get your paints and put them in the freezer. Put them on a piece of glass and just into the freezer and they will be there for you. And they won't dry. So again, I'm going to try to adjust the heat of that flesh tone. So a little bit more titanium white. And I always, 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 always recommend using um, artist grade oil paints. This would be very difficult if I had student grade oil paints. You really want your pigments to have the most strength possible. So I'm going to add a little bit of a lizard and permanent cadmium red just a little bit to this little area of flesh tone. There's gonna to be just a little bit of pink, a little bit more warmth here to the earlobe. And again, I'm not trying to say that the ear is 
uh, set in stone, I'm going to be able to adjust these shapes when the time comes. And again, just looking for simple shape. So right around here, there's going to be a little bit of a um, a little bit of a plane change, and I think this will be the area where we're going to start to indicate planes because this is going to be one very large, large plane to delineate. First thing I'm going to do is just adjust the outside shape of the hair. Super simple. Now then, um, I'm going to use the flesh tone brush. I'm going to add a little bit of ivory black and let this background color mix into it. So now our flesh tone brush, our main flesh tone brush has turned in to a half tone brush. So now we're going to start to get into planes. There's also a little bit of a shadow right over here that I didn't see before. And so this is Alla Prima wet on wet. So we're going to be painting wet layers of paint directly on top of wet layers of paint. And we're going to use a little bit more medium as we move up in the number of uh, wet on wet layers. So I'm seeing here that the shoulder, there could be a little problem with the angle of the shoulder. So I'm going to move that shape up. I'm just going to use the ultramarine blue because I think that I just want a simple little value change here to kind of indicate where I want the shoulder to fall. And I know this is very different to the photo reference. Again, this is a paint, this is going to be a paint along. So just go ahead, relax and paint along with me. Just know that I think it's going to be easier if you wait for all of the videos to be uploaded. Moving that shape up a little bit. It could be here, it could be there, who knows, but the important thing is just to uh, get these shapes to relate to one another. So again, I'm just going to keep looking at the outside shape. Now I have a feeling that the timer is going to go off at any second now. So once the timer goes off, that will be my cue to transition into the next video. And the timer didn't go off. I'm actually looking at my uh, camera screen. Something's wrong with my my phone. But anyway, that's going to be the end of the first segment of this paint along. I know that the uh, camera angles are going to be a little bit different, but I hope that this uh, helps to enhance the experience. That being said, I wish you the best in all of your artwork. I really hope that these videos are helping you out and I'll see you back again very soon.